My name is Dr. Joseph McHale, and I'm a hematologist at Mayo Clinic here in Arizona and represent all the Mayo Clinic multiple myeloma physicians across the three institutions in Rochester, Arizona, and Florida. We've recently published our consensus guidelines entitled Management of Newly Diagnosed Symptomatic Multiple Myeloma, Updated Mayo Stratification of Myeloma and Risk Adapted Therapy, also known as MSMART, Consensus Guidelines 2013. This is a consensus statement that we have now updated for our third time for the management of patients with multiple myeloma. It's a consensus paper written by over 25 physicians who focus their practices in multiple myeloma and all work at Mayo Clinic. The key finding of our consensus guidelines or the key approach of our consensus guidelines is to provide very practical advice to both providers of care such as physicians and physician assistants and nurse practitioners in the care of multiple myeloma and indeed patients to how we as Mayo Clinic physicians approach the care of a newly diagnosed patient with multiple myeloma. These guidelines are particularly focused for clinical practice. The key ideas behind our consensus statement are to try and provide something that is very practical advice for the care of patients with multiple myeloma. When one goes to the NCCN guidelines or other large guideline statements, there are several lists of options for patients for their treatment of their multiple myeloma. We have tried to focus this in such a way that we give very practical advice to the care of an individual patient so that someone doesn't have to just look at a list of 10 options and try and make a decision as to which is best for their patient. But based on certain key factors, can establish what is the best care for my patient with multiple myeloma. And these key components include risk stratification. Indeed, the title carries the phrase risk stratification. We've determined that multiple myeloma is really not a single disease. There are some patients that do particularly well, and unfortunately those who don't do very well and succumb to their disease very quickly. And those patients can be dis distinguished based on what we would call their risk uh, status. And so in the MSMART guidelines, we distinguish patients with high-risk disease, intermediate risk disease, and standard risk disease. And based on those three classifications, we have different recommendations for each group. In addition to the importance of risk stratification, we have also tried to establish other facets and aspects of my multiple myeloma that will result in the best options for an individual patient. This is indeed consensus based on our experience, but it's very important that we look at the literature and that these guidelines be evidence-based. And so indeed, for every one of our recommendations, we have reviewed appropriate studies that have been done in the care of patients with multiple myeloma and have tried to provide the highest level evidence for each of our recommendations. Furthermore, we, through the ancient adage of above all do no harm, we have tried to ensure that we are conservative in our options, that we do not provide extra uh, therapies that may be particularly costly that may be particularly side effect laden to patients unless there's particularly strong evidence for the addition of drugs together. Indeed, in the multiple myeloma community, often people are giving several drugs altogether without tremendous evidence for it. And so we believe the MSMART guidelines provide a rational, safe, and highly effective approach to caring for patients with multiple myeloma. Thankfully, the field of multiple myeloma is changing. We have more and more options to provide for patients. The FDA in the last year has um, allowed us to incorporate two new agents in the care of patients with, uh, with multiple myeloma. And so this is always a work in progress. These will not be the final MSMART guidelines, but they are the best evidence that we have currently in 2013. As these new agents are incorporated into practice, and as they're incorporated into the care of patients with relapse disease and with newly diagnosed disease, we will be constantly updating these MSMART guidelines. Indeed, we update them regularly for, pu for publication in Mayo Clinic proceedings, but we also provide them on the website msmart.org, M-S-M-A-R-T.org, whereby we on a regular basis update the results so that patients and providers can have up-to-date information in our recommendations for care of patients with multiple myeloma. We believe that the MSMART guidelines are going to be particularly helpful for patients and also for their providers. One of the things we found in our experience is over 25 of us involved in the care of patients with multiple myeloma, 
it's very difficult to negotiate what is the best for my patient. And very often we get phone calls or emails or some kind of, some kind of communication asking, what would you do for your patient with this situation? And that's how we've tried to lay out the MSMART guidelines, so that they're very practical and really almost like a personal consult for an individual patient. This can be helpful to guide physicians and their patients as to what exact best therapy uh, should, should be provided to an individual patient. We hope that it will uh, allow uh, physicians to incorporate greater discussions with their patients, uh, greater discussions about side effects of drugs, potentially the cost of drugs, and most importantly, how effective they are going to be. The final take-home message I would leave with you is that these sets of guidelines, the MSMART guidelines in Mayo Clinic Proceedings 2013, are a strong consensus statement of over 25 physicians at Mayo Clinic that work on a day-to-day -day basis with patients with multiple myeloma. We want to provide straightforward, evidence-based, risk-stratified, and logical suggestions to the care of patients with multiple myeloma, and we trust it will be a help to the myeloma community. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.